Lincoln knocked down the power pole, causing the prison to be in darkness. Michael urged them to hurry. The first three people to come out quickly arrived on the ground, but Michael, who was behind them, stopped in place. Galago was anxious and urged Michael to hurry. Michael looked at his watch calmly and let them choose to believe him. Soon, the power supply in the prison was restored. The three people exposed to the light were warned by the guards and they froze in place. Obviously, Michael had planned it. The interval for the power outage to be restored was not 30 seconds at all. He deliberately made them believe that the time was not enough for everyone so that the selfish people would go ahead. Although he wasn't sure who would go first, these few people were all within his expectations. And Mahoney escaped because he wasn't that greedy. Lachero was unwilling and started running towards the fence desperately. As a result, he was shot down by the guards. The three people were quickly captured, and Whistler didn't understand what was happening. Michael didn't say anything either. Teabag also didn't react to the sudden change. Bellick asked where Michael was, and Teabag quickly told Bellick to shut up. As long as they didn't expose Michael, he could continue to lead them in the escape. The two of them and the severely injured Lechero were brought back to the prison. Susan heard about the prison break at Sona and quickly arrived with LJ and Sophia. She hoped this time it wouldn't fail again. Mahoney had already guessed Michael's intentions, but now the situation was urgent and there were only 10 minutes until dawn. They couldn't get out with so many patrolling guards. Galago was anxious and told Michael that they should go back because the guards would definitely call their names. Michael told him not to move because the time was almost up. Just as Sucre was about to answer Lincoln's call, the guards came in. Lincoln was worried when he couldn't reach Sucre. Without him, the plan would be disrupted. Sucre was also anxious, but he had no way to do anything. He asked the guards what was happening outside, and the guards told him that someone had escaped from Sona prison. They were all captured, and one person was severely injured. Sucre was shocked when he heard this. Meanwhile, Lincoln couldn't reach Sucre and instead received a call from Gallego's father. He told Lincoln that he arrived. Lincoln told him where to park and asked him to meet at the designated location. Mestas was angry and demanded to know how they escaped. Teabag didn't say anything, but Bellick quickly confessed. He said there was an underground passage in Lechero's room. Mestas and his men went over there. At this point, Mahoney and the others hadn't moved yet. Michael was observing the situation outside until Mestas unlocked the lock, and then he started to act. Bellick led the guards to the tunnel, and Michael was waiting for the guards to disperse from the fence. He knew that after the people above were captured, the patrol cars would gather there. This would create cover for them to approach the fence little by little. However, Galago was already terrified, and he was very worried that someone would catch up from behind. Just as the guards went up to check, they managed to escape. The guards reported to Mestas that there was no one inside. It was only then that Teabag realized he had been tricked by Michael. Bellick was hit and immediately begged for mercy. He said it was all Michael's doing, and he asked the guards to check on the people in the prison. After counting, it was indeed four people missing. Mestas ordered a lockdown. I want to post the protector on the entire perimeter of the... But it was too late. Mestas looked at the hole in the fence and told the guards that they had escaped. Michael once again started running for his life under the pursuit of the guards. At this moment, Whistler suddenly twisted his foot and he told Michael to go ahead. However, Michael couldn't do that because he needed to use Whistler to exchange for LJ. With their joint efforts, they finally arrived at the seaside. At this time, the police are investigating a case of a bus robbery. At this time, Lincoln also drove to the beach. Time was running out, and Michael said that the guards would catch up in a few minutes so they needed to act immediately. 
Lincoln glanced at Galago and started digging up the box buried here. Inside were portable oxygen tanks. They needed to escape by diving so they wouldn't be detected by the pursuing guards. However, he had only prepared four oxygen tanks and they were now five people. Guys, four tanks. Sucks for you, my huh? But now was not the time for infighting. They needed to disappear from here quickly. Michael threw the oxygen tank to Mahoney, and then he and Lincoln used one. Whistler was anxious and wanted Michael to let him go. Whistler told him that if he reached the company, they would all die. He said that after ensuring LJ's safety, he would surrender himself. At this moment, Susan called and confirmed that Whistler had escaped. She asked Lincoln to meet her in Panama City in 20 minutes. Then they put their shoes in the box and buried it. Lincoln took out a sealed bag and Whistler was about to put the bird guide book in when he panically realized that the book was missing. When he was escaping, he accidentally dropped the book on the ground. Mahoney wanted to put a photo of his son in the bag before diving, but Lincoln heartlessly refused. At this time, Gallego said that he couldn't swim, and Michael told him to follow him, and he would be fine. When the guards came looking, they didn't find anyone. Inside the prison, Bellick was beaten by guards, and Teabag watched from the side. The guards at the seaside requested reinforcements from Mestas. Mesta said that he wanted all prisoners back today. Sucre was very anxious at this time, and he asked the guards to let him go. However, the guards told him that he couldn't go anywhere until the situation was resolved. Sucre became more and more anxious because he was responsible for picking them up. He made a phone call to book a boat before, but now he can't get across no matter what. And Michael and the others can only wait anxiously. They are exhausted and don't know how much longer they can hold on. At this time, Gallego's father has already arrived at the agreed location. He saw the boat still docked and asked, has anyone taken the boat today? The boat owner said no one had appeared. Galago's father sensed something was wrong. The shoes buried in the sand have been found by the police dog, and the prison guards finally know how they escaped. Mestas angrily contacted the Coast Guard. At this point, Galago is almost unable to hold on, but Michael pulled him up. He knows that they can't hold on for too long and can only keep persuading everyone, including himself. He said Sucre wouldn't abandon them. He will definitely come. At this time, Mahoney spotted a ship, but Lincoln didn't see the prearranged signal. Galago felt desperate, thinking it must be the Coast Guard. When the ship approached, it turned out to be Galago's father on board. Michael is now extremely lucky to have brought Galago out. The father and son embraced tightly. He previously listened to Lincoln's approximate direction and sailed the boat in that direction. He didn't expect that he actually saw them. Michael doesn't know what happened to Susser, but he can't afford to think about anything else now. They start thinking about the next steps on the boat. Bellic has already collapsed on the ground. And Letro is also on the verge of death. Now it's Teabag's turn and the guards drag him out for severe torture. At this moment, he sees the bird guy that Whistler had. When Susan called to threaten Whistler, he saw Whistler looking miserable while holding the booklet. He knows that this thing must be important, so he discreetly puts the book in his possession. He was pulled into Susser's next door. Mestas didn't get any useful clues and becomes very irritable. He glances at Sucre and orders the guards to let him go. At this time, Teabag was taken off his pants by the prison guard and then took out the electric clip. He starts to panic. Just when he is desperate, he sees Susser. Teabag didn't hesitate to point at Susser. And then he told the guards that he didn't know anything, but the person outside definitely knew about it. Susser denied knowing Michael. Mestas quickly received his information, and Susser's identity as an escaped prisoner was exposed. At this point, Lingan and Michael have already landed. They changed into the clothes they had prepared in advance. Lincoln is very grateful to Galego's father. Galego's father has met his son and he hopes he can get his son back soon too. Galego didn't expect that he would actually leave Sana prison and he owed it all to Michael. He shook hands with Michael seriously and then left with his father. 
However, they encountered a police roadblock not long after the car drove out. Gallego panicked and asked his father to turn around and drive back. He didn't want to go back to Sona prison again. But his father seemed to have made up his mind and continued driving forward. Lincoln and their fight continued. And Susan called to ask where he was. Lincoln said they were on their way to Panama City. Susan looked at the tracker and was disappointed with Lincoln. Soon, Lincoln's car was surrounded, and Michael didn't understand why they were being tracked. Until he saw the watch Whistler was wearing, the one Susan gave him, he threw the watch out of the car. They placed their hope on Lincoln's driving skills. Lincoln drove the car into a small road, and Mahoney looked at the road ahead and said there was no way forward. Lincoln stopped the car and then let everyone enter a small cabin. When Susan arrived, she quickly noticed something was wrong. Gunshots had been continuously ringing, but there were only a few initial bullet holes in the car. Pushing open the door, they found only a looping tape recorder inside. The gunshots were pre-recorded by Lincoln and Sukri. Lincoln is not a path chosen randomly. This was a carefully prepared escape route. However, Whistler thought Lincoln's efforts were in vain because those people wouldn't let him leave so easily. Michael didn't pay attention to him. He believed Lincoln was doing the right thing. Lincoln found a warehouse for trading, and behind it was a secret passage just in case. Now they have the upper hand, and if Susan wants Whistler, she must follow his instructions. Lincoln told Susan the location of the trade and told her he wanted to see LJ in 20 minutes before hanging up the phone. Inside the warehouse, Mahoney helped Whistler with his injured foot. Michael went to find Lincoln and was surprised by how well planned everything was. Lincoln explained that he just wanted to get his son back and that it had awakened his potential. At that moment, Mahoney said he wanted to leave, but Lincoln stopped him as soon as he turned around. Lincoln said Mahoney killed his father and couldn't just leave so easily. Whistler noticed this and started thinking. Facing Lincoln's gun, Mahoney said he had faced a difficult choice at the time as well. He had been threatened, and he didn't regret choosing his family. After spending time together, Michael realized that Mahoney wasn't a bad person. He wanted to convince Lincoln, but in Lincoln's eyes, Mahoney was his father's killer, and he only wanted revenge for his father. Before he could shoot, they heard the sound breaking glass from Whistler's side. Lincoln went to check and found that Whistler had escaped. Whistler had been pretending the whole time, and his foot wasn't actually injured. His goal was to separate himself from Michael and find an opportunity to escape. Whistler stole a car and left in front of Michael and Lincoln. They looked into the distance, contemplating how to proceed with the next trade. 